What's up, you guys? Mighty Mike. Welcome to another episode of the Mighty Mike Show. This is our Live at Five segment where essentially I go live, answer your questions, and get into a couple topics, the most uh, most frequent questions that I get asked about, whether it's building one of my businesses or whether building a marketing company, process serving, private investigation firm, uh, software, like I've done a lot. And so the Live at Fives is my way of being able to answer questions I get all over social media and to be able to just kind of vlog and tell you guys about what's going on in my business and in my life. So if you have questions during the show, make sure you comment them below, okay? Let's dive right into it. So the big question is this, how can we achieve financial freedom, quit the nine to five and live a mighty life? That is the question. And this show will give you the answer. You are listening to the Mighty Mike Show with your host, Mighty Mike Reed. Okay, so I actually have a few different things here. I'm kind of taking notes as people send me messages on Instagram and different places. So uh, I'm going to kind of go through some of them, but I just a couple current events. I always like to start with a little bit of current events, what's going on, and, and things that just kind of blow my mind uh, in the market uh, out there in the world. The first one that's on my mind that is just kind of like crazy, I'm trying to wrap my uh, my head around how it's going to affect the market overall, is X. <laughs> okay. Well, we've used X as a term for like just fill in the blanks, like X business, right? Or X name of something, right? Uh, but Elon Musk has went and made X the name of Twitter. He changed the name of Twitter to X. And uh, and at first I was like, wow, that's crazy. But then I thought of the branding implications of this. I mean, for those of you guys who don't know the story of X, X essentially was what he wanted to name the bank of PayPal. So essentially uh, PayPal at first was going to be, he had much bigger vision for what PayPal was going to be, but his investors didn't agree with him. So the short story is that when he left, the only stipulation was is that he was going to take X.com with him. And uh, obviously, he it was a big thing for him back then. And so even today, after like SpaceX and like X is his thing. And so now the most richest man in the world, the the guy who's like an engineer, like, you know, in his brain, he he is just the most genius in so many different levels because this is his brand. And now he owns a social platform like a pri privately, like he owns it. He owns Twitter, which is now X. So if you haven't logged into your Twitter, which is the case for many people, and as a marketer, if you're a fellow marketer watching this, you would agree that uh, most people just forgot about Twitter. You know, a lot of people go on Twitter and they post like little things here and there, but Twitter's essentially has just been like a, you know, more information gathering. As a marketer, you go on Twitter and you'll post a bunch of polls and a bunch of different things that you think might be good for social, but you're not sure. And then you'll uh, look and see which gets the most engagement. And then you'll use that as a metric for then posting on Facebook and Instagram and different places because you want to give only the best content to those more engaging platforms, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> pretty fascinated by that. If you go, you can follow me up, by the way, on all social medias at MightyMikeReed.com. That's M-I-G-H-T-Y. Mighty Mike Reed .com. And uh, so that's what it looks like now. It has like an X. You go, it just has a big X at the top. Kind of crazy, right? So it's just an X, <laughs> okay? So I just find that so cool. Um, at first, I wasn't sure how to feel about it. But as a marketer, I think it's genius. Elon Musk understands what attention, how powerful attention is. And I think you're going to see the ripple of that in his businesses, uh, being able to pull in people from Facebook. And uh, what he's commented on is that he might pay, pay creators like YouTubers uh, or business people who are making money on YouTube, basically getting ad revenue from YouTube. He's going to pull them from YouTube to X. And uh, I think that I, I actually I actually think he might do it. You know, if he's willing to share more of the ad revenue and he has more of the audience on X, then there's a good chance that he may be able to do that. YouTube is just a behemoth and I love YouTube. But um, if he's able to do it, it would be crazy. So that's one thing on the marketing front. You guys know I'm a marketing guru. I love market, all things marketing and real estate. 
Um, so this is a big thing for marketers out there. So if you haven't looked at it, go ahead, check it out, log back in, download the Twitter app, <laughs> the X app, and um, I don't know, and play with it and see, because I think I really think it's going to get some traction. Okay, um, that's kind of cool, right? Current events. The other thing too is like this whole uh, alien thing. You know, I wanted to comment on that. You know, there there's some people out there. I, I seen a video of an FBI expert being interviewed by someone from Congress, I believe, that was saying, you know, did you recover this, you know, plane? Yes. This UFO? Yes. Did you recover uh, a body from the plane? Yes. Was it human? No. You know, was it an alien? And he's like, I can't talk about that in a public setting. I was like, is this a movie? Is this propaganda? You know, I don't know, but I was pretty much like, mm, it's pretty weird. You know, so the things that are happening these days are just insane. So, again, I try to keep this about things that you guys might be interested in that are going to help you break free from the nine to five and live a mighty life. A little update on me um, is something I like to share on these. Um, just bought myself a new Suburban. It's pretty cool. It's real nice. Blacked out Suburban. Love it. Super classy. Just feels good, you know. Um <clears throat> The marketing company is growing. It's doing really well. Um, the real estate company, we uh, started a new wholesale division out of Orlando. I have a team uh, over there that's doing really good. My multifamily team is put together now. We have you know, our key principles. We have some underwriters, so that's going really well. So if you have questions about that, go ahead and ask them below or feel free to reach out to me, <clears throat> like I said, on the different socials. Let me go down here a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so ask your questions below. We'll kind of get into this. So there's a couple of things. I'm going to go ahead and go start going through some questions here in a little bit. But tell me what you think below. Like, did you, I mean, what do you think about the alien thing? <laughs> what do you think about Twitter, right? Like, is that a thing? Is uh, Twitter becoming X going to, like, change the social media landscape? I don't know. We're live on it right now. So if you're live on Twitter, or, I'm sorry, on X watching this, comment below. I'm watching on X. <laughs> okay. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, got a couple deals under contract. Uh, and we have some a multifamily project we're working on out of Georgia. So if you are a qualified investor, right, if you um, are someone who's used to investing in syndications, and that's something that you know, you're able to do legally, definitely reach out to my team, we're going to be um, highlighting that on a webinar coming up here next week. So I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, yeah, lots to be grateful for, lots to be excited about. So um, that is that on that. So let's jump, let's jump into some questions here and I'll see if I can't help help some people out here. So what metrics should we track or analyze when running our marketing campaigns. So basically, so what you want to do when it comes to running marketing campaigns is you're looking at your KPIs, your key performance indicators. For example, if you have a website, how many people land on the website? You need to make sure you have a Google Analytics account because Google Analytics can tie into your website. At my company, we build websites. Uh, it's called MightyWebsiteBuilder.com. You could go there, check it out. I have not seen a platform that builds better websites for as cheap as we charge. We barely charge anything at all. And we build just the greatest, the best website. So, I mean, I'm non-biased. I'm not building them anymore. So, but they're great websites. Beautiful. Um, and there's like a little spot. There's a spot in the back end of the website. Uh, I think it's called UA Link. And so you can actually go right into your Google Analytics. Take that and plug it right in. Google has made it so easy for you to be able to run ads and then track them on your website. So if you go into your Google Analytics, I just did this for one of our clients um, that I'm running Google Ads for, and he spent about $1,000 a month on Google Ads. Well, you want to be able to track that, right? So we got a special phone number, right? This is a part of your KPI, a part of your indicators to know how, how things are performing. That's essentially what it is. So it, it goes, just imagine like a, a trail of where something starts over here and it goes this way, right? So it starts over here at... Um, let's say your Google ad. So how many people are actually seeing the ad without clicking on it or without calling? Okay. Those are called impressions. How many impressions are you getting over the course of a month? And then you try to increase those impressions every, every month over a month. And then uh, how many clicks are you getting? 
how many page lands are you getting, how many click to calls are you getting. Those are key performance indicators. And you want to make sure that um, that the amount of people who actually hire you for whatever service you're offering or whatever you're doing, um, you want to make sure you're tracking how many are you getting each month and are they coming from those mar the marketing that you're doing. One of the easiest, simplest ways to do this in real estate is have a different phone number for each, each avenue of marketing that you're doing. So if you have a billboard, that should have its that one billboard should have its own phone number, right? Should have its own phone number. So whenever somebody calls from that very expensive billboard, you know, and you can actually track it and see that how many calls you got specifically for the billboard. Okay, same thing with bandit signs. If you have bandit signs and they have a phone number on them, which I don't always recommend uh, to have, you know, depending on what you're doing it for. But yeah, having a different one for each one. So for different cities, different locations, different ads, like if you do Google, um, you do Google Spaces ads where you have like a little thing on the right hand side of the screen, you can pay for those um, on page ads. You want to have a different phone number, right? So if we're talking about market, getting people to hit your website, that's just looking about how many, how much bounces you got, how what was your bounce rate? So if people hit the website, spend a couple of minutes there, and then purchase, or did they hit the website and bounce off right away? So those are some key performance indicators that you can use um, for marketing your your company, for tracking your your marketing spend. Uh, how can here's the next question? It says, how can we generate more leads or sales? That's a very broad question because it depends on what you're trying to market, but. <clears throat> for example, um, in real estate, you know, it just, it depends on who it is, but let's say we're trying to get more sellers to sell their home. That's like the key thing, whether you're a listing agent or an investor, right? So one of the ways you can do that is you can actually reach out to sellers by mail, right? That's a very expensive way to do it. You send them mailers, right? Once a week, another way to do it more popular is to call them. All right, this this is like guerrilla marketing. Like you're spending your time or your money to get a hold of them. Um, if you're trying to do online ads, you can run Google ads. So think about this for a second. <clears throat> think of a step back because this is a very general question. Uh, Chad asked the question: um, If you're, how can we get more leads or sales? So I would take a step back and say, um, is this the type of thing that somebody's going to go on Google to search for? Right. Like if you're getting a divorce or you're trying to sell your house, you're going to go to Google and you're going to search for whatever it is you're trying to, to accomplish. Whereas um, if you're thinking about buying a new SUV, but you don't actually need it, you might be, you might need some branding. You might need some touches. They call them touches, whether it's like seeing them on social media, seeing a billboard. This is why attorneys spend so much money on billboards and TV ads, radio ads, because they know they know you need a lot of touches in order to get that call that isn't necessarily a requirement. For example, let me give you a better example. If you needed a plumber, you would call a plumber. <laughs> no two ways about it. You go on Google, you type in plumber, my city, uh, enter, and you would wait for a plumber information to show up. You look at his website, see how much his rates are. What is it? Boom. Call him. You'd call him up probably right away. Right. I would, I just call him. Hey, my toilet's broken. My house is getting ruined. Please come now. And it doesn't matter if the world's coming down. That is actually called inbound marketing. So you're putting uh, Google ads out there and you're putting your, your website out there that is going to bring people to call you. Now that's the cream of the crop you know, think that's the long game. That's the branding game of like, of making Google happy, whether it's your SEO, uh, search engine optimization on your website, whether it's getting reviews on Google so that you have that social proof and people want to hire you. Um, having that person call you is, is a part of that. So you build this structure because you have a company and in a certain location that's going to get people to call you. Okay. Then there's outbound marketing, which is like prospecting, where you are calling people. Like you're not going to call uh, John and go, hey, is the toilet still working? You know, like back in the day they had, hey, is your refrigerator running? You know, and someone says, yeah, you, why don't you go catch it? You know, it's a little joke. <laughs> um, but so you're not going to call random people and ask them if their 
your toilet's working because, hey, I'm a plumber. I could come out and fix it. But like, no, my toilet's fine, bro. Why'd you, why are you calling me, right? So some industries, their focus would be more on brand, like an attorney or a plumber. They're, they're going to be more about building a brand so that in the event that someone does need what you offer, they will call you. Okay. So also companies spend a ton of money on getting in a place where they're in the process of someone maybe getting ready to need them, right? So in real estate, what we do is we'll buy lists of people who are in pre-foreclosure where the bank is about to take the house back, right? And we'll call them, hey, how's it going? If you could get the right price for your home, would you consider selling? And so we'll go through, you know, and so that's in the process. And you can actually segment lists like that. And I can show you guys if enough people are interested, you can comment below. I'll, I'll do a whole video on it. But you can segment the list where you find a list of people who are going through, through pre-foreclosure and they're getting a divorce and their property has liens on it and they have code violations and like a bunch of other things, right? And they have a mortgage they're upside down on, whatever it is. And as you guys know, I love real estate. There's you can buy any home, whatever the situation is. I will buy your house if you if the terms make sense to me, and I can get cash flow. I will buy the house. Period. Every single time I'll buy the house. So some people are like, oh no, I'm upside down on my mortgage, so I can't because I have to pay the uh, the the realtor. Doesn't matter. We can work around that. You know, all these different ways that you can purchase a property. Um that there's no need for you to suffer or have to pay too much money or write a check to close to sell your house. It's the worst thing to, to sell your house that you've been paying payments on for years and have to write a check at closing because you're upside down on your mortgage. Uh, especially if you have a low interest rate, that's just crazy. I don't get it. So the market does shift and does go down, but that's just crazy. So we got a few other questions about marketing here. Um, uh, how how can we create compelling content from Brad? Uh, compelling content is really about, um, compel, I guess, compelling people. I don't know what he's saying. You're compelling people to maybe take action. or um, So content, when it comes to like creating content that people, I would, I'll say engaging. Compelling to me is like, I don't know, like compelling them to buy maybe. But something that is engaging is like, what do people care about? What are the, what are the people that watch what you're doing or that your your ideal avatar? You know, in the multifamily and in the real estate space, we talk about this all the time. Who's your avatar? The person that you're trying to reach out to. For me, my avatar are people who are either in business or want to start their own business, and you know whether it's a real estate company or otherwise, so that they can break out of the nine to five. Those are my people. Okay. That's my avatar, my specific, and you sometimes will say, imagine a specific person whose name is Tom and he's 35 and he's married and he's stuck in the nine to five, blah, blah. To create an avatar so that you know who you're speaking to. So right now I'm speaking to Tom and I'm saying, Tom, listen, you don't have to stay in this job that you hate. There's a million and one different ways to go start your own thing, to do your own thing. You don't have to stay in that grind, right? So that's the idea uh, about your avatar. And then Create content that you think that they would want to hear. Um, sometimes I know some creators that create content just because they enjoy it. And then their passion for what they're creating comes out in their content, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, just create things that you know people want to hear or want to see already. I think that's the key. You know, Mr. Beast says it's the best. If you haven't heard Mr. Beast, look him up. He creates content that's just entertaining. Like, I don't care what your age is. If you're watching it, you're like, man, that's just so good, you know. And you, even if it's silly or kind of dumb, you are in, you're um, just kind of captivated by it because it's so entertaining. Because he understands the psychology of the viewer and what they're looking for. Now, if you're looking to do sales, you need to look up, um, you know, neuro linguistic programming, which some people think is unethical, but actually, you're just studying the way that people see things, and you're helping them see that your product or service actually could be for them, right? Because um, you can't convince somebody to do something that they actually don't want to do unless you pressure them or you do something just unethical or, you know. For the most part, people buy because they want to buy. People love to buy. And um, when they don't want to buy, it's usually because they're broke, okay? And so you can, you know, for what I'm selling is, 
just free knowledge is like helping people. Um, you know, they're good. They want that. Um, yeah. Increase brand awareness and how important is it to have a brand? Some people are so terrified of having a brand to get out there and actually like share like what it is they do, you know, like having a logo, talking about things they're interested in. So many people are like worried that they're going to be judged by other people. A common technique by big brands, uh, like not too big, like McDonald's big, but like medium brands is misspelling things. Yesterday I saw a post by Grant Cardone and it said like own your future, but he misspelled your, he put you or you own you future or something like that. And, I, and a bunch of people were commenting like, how about learn how to spell? How about this and that? Like some haters. And I thought to myself, knowing Grant, like that was on purpose. That was something he did. He intentionally put that on there because he knew that people would, um, you know, he knew that people would comment. Let's see, Jay Shack says, Mike, I hope you're doing good. What is the best advice for new investors? Great question, Jay. I would say for new investors, if you're just getting started, and these are the people that are closest to my heart because new investors are people, uh, you know, maybe that you're, you have your nine to five still, right? And I was saying that's like my avatar. You still have your nine to five or you're trying to break loose from it, or maybe you have broken loose, but you really need some, you need some, uh, you need to find your first investment. You need to find your first deal. And so I love that question. Um, uh, a couple different things I would say, first of all, uh, thank you, Jay. A couple different things I would say, first of all, is um, think about what your own situation is what your best skill set is and then you could go from there the first one for me was is i was good on the phone so being able to actually pull a list on prop stream or or um, was it lead source you can actually pull lists on there really cheap prop stream will actually skip trace the list for you now and their data is pretty good it used to be terrible but it's actually pretty good now and you could get that data or those numbers and you can use a software like Follow a Boss or one of these other like Mojo Dialer. You can definitely use those, but you could actually just use your cell phone and start dialing, you know? So that's what I did. And then you get people on the phone that are willing to sell. And I was an agent at the time, so I got lots of listings out of it. But you can also find that guy who he can't list it because his property uh, is, you know, out, out of shape and he can't put it on the, on the market. Um, there's so many different scenarios, right? But calling, if you're like super introverted and you can't call, you could do something like setting up a mail campaign and then mail it out. The thing is like figuring out what you're, what you're best at. And, and if you're a visionary like me, then you want to go out and like, just like conquer the world. If you're an integrator, one of the best things you could do, whether you're a visionary or an integrator is like, find your person that you can team up with and your where your traits can complement each other, and then it's like rocket fuel, man. You just take off. And actually, I get visionary and integrator from the book Rocket Fuel. Uh, it's what that's what they talk about. Like, figure out who you are, and then you will best be able to serve the world in a way that you know your best your traits are. So, thanks a millions, adorable friend. Truly appreciate your prosper self. Well, thanks, Jay. I appreciate you for for asking the question. Um, one of the, uh, another tip for investors, cause I feel like that was kind of high level, right? Like who you are and, you know, figure it out. Like it's good advice, but, but what's more tangible, right? Like how do you, what are some terms to look up? If you want to YouTube some more stuff? You, I got lots of videos on this stuff too. Like wholesaling, wholesaling by far is one of the best ways for you to make $10,000 in a week. You know, you find it today and an investor can close on it in five to seven days and you got $10,000 in your bank. And that's probably for new investors. That's one of the most exciting things that they focus on is essentially going out there. Like I said, on prop stream, you can go to mighty rei.com and actually um, they give you lots of free stuff. When you go to that website, they give you like free 14 day trial. You can go check out prop stream for free. At mightyrei.com. That's my link. So you can go check them out. But what you do is you pull a list of people who own properties and you call them up and you say, if you could get the right price for your home, would you consider selling? So, like, it, I call it the million dollar question. If you could get the right price for your home, would you consider selling? And you just say it over and over and over. And as you're calling these people, somebody's going to go, Well, how much would you give me? 
Oh, that's a great question. And so you figure out how much the other homes are going for in the area. And you, you have an idea in your mind on Zillow will tell you roughly what they'll sell for. And then you could say, okay, well, I'm just curious. Um, looking at how much it'll go for, like what, what are you, what number were you thinking? And oftentimes you'll find them on Zillow. Actually, I'm going to show you guys something that I think could help you a lot. Um, because anytime I team up with a new wholesaler, I always teach them this when they start cold calling. Let me just bring this down here real quick. This is something that I didn't think it was that powerful, but I've seen, uh, I've seen other people start to use it and find a lot of, a lot of success. What's happening here? Oh yeah. Share screen. Present. Share screen. They add so many new features to this platform. It's crazy. Entire screen. Which screen? Oh my gosh. Okay. There we go. Zillow. So I just want to show you guys this. Okay. So Zillow. So there's a cool little tab right here. And this is like a little ninja trick. If you haven't been, if you just got into marketing or, or real estate or any kind of business, if you find one of these deals, I personally will buy it from you. Uh, okay. So come over here and go for sale by owner. Cause you want to be the buyer. You're looking for people who want to sell. So you go to for sale by owner, not homes for sale, but for sale by owner. Okay. And it's going to come up with all kinds of homes that you don't want. So you get rid of, get rid of St. Cloud. Okay. It's going to show you a specific area. Here's Orlando. This is my market. So then you can come over here. This is all the for sale by owners. There's 237 for sale by owners. So we can filter some out here, right? To save you some time, filter some out. Say we want ones that are for sale. We're not caring about the price just yet. We want things that are at least, let's say two or more bedrooms. That'll get rid of a lot of the apartments that we're not interested in. Apply. Okay, home type. Let's deselect all and let's only select homes, town homes. I doubt there will be any multifamily. Yeah, there's no multifamily. Okay, so that's it. And then you can go, there's more filters too. You can click here and and change stuff. But this is by owner. That's what we're looking for. And you could say, well, that's cool, but I don't want to buy any that have an HOA. So you can go no HOA. And I actually took away quite a few. Okay, so there's only 66. But you know what's cool is if it doesn't have an HOA, there's a good chance that it's in the country or it's a little bit, actually a little bit better for an investor. Uh, for a rental. Okay. So anyway, let me show you the, the ninja trick here. So this here is a four bedroom in Coco. Oh, wow. It's going way out here because the map is out here. So let's go over here real quick and find something in. Oh, I just talked to that guy in Maitland. Let's see something in Rockledge. Here's one in Orlando. Let's look at this. Oh, this one's like a mobile. Anyway, the, the tip I wanted to show you is actually much more simple. You just come over here. Um, you find you, you bring it up. Now, remember, Zillow is a marketing agency. Their goal is to get you to click here, and it will call one of the Zillow agents, meaning an agent who pays for ads. They pay Zillow sometimes three or $4,000 a month for ads. To, to be called, right? So if they live near this area and they maybe pay for the zip code, when someone clicks this, it's going to call that agent who pays for the ads. I just think it's crazy. The agent still pays Zillow for ads. So see here, investor handyman special, great for an investor. And so you can come over here and you can actually call this person. I don't know if I've called this person yet. Let me see. Uh, well, it's like a mobile home, so I probably haven't, I wouldn't have called them. I don't really invest in mobile homes. Some people do, and it's fine. I just don't. So here you go. It says, the phone number's right here, guys. It's right here. Like, I, people click on this so much because it's up at the top, but if you scroll down here and you see listed by property owner, they're not going to give you the owner's information, their name, but they will give you the phone number. And so you take this number and you call them and you say, hey, I see your property here on Met uh, Mediterranean is listed for sale. Is that still for sale? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, great. I was wondering when I could come by and take a look at it. And if you're trying to get a, a wholesale deal, your best bet is to show up in person. They call it belly to belly and make a connection with that person and then tell them, hey, 
Uh, I was just curious. This is kind of the million dollar question, follow up question is I was just curious if for some reason you're unable to sell this after, let's say, uh, three weeks, hypothetically, three weeks, uh, a month goes by and you're unable to sell it. Would you be interested in having a conversation with me about uh, other options? Well, what? Well, maybe, yeah. What do you mean? Uh, I'll probably just list it with an agent. Great. Well, well, I can actually help you list it with an agent. I have an agent on my team who specializes in listings, and we actually include the professional photos. We have a drone pilot that comes and gets an overhead shot of where it's located here in Orlando. It's a great location. So, and then so because that's what they're thinking, uh, agent. And then you turn around and say, but you actually don't have to list it with an agent. We actually buy properties. I actually buy properties like this, me and my partners, um, all the time for investing for investments. Um, the question, and I can even pay you more than what you're asking for it. If you, if I can get the right terms that make sense to me and they're going to say, Oh, well, what terms? And then you can discuss, say, well, I have a couple of questions. Is the home already paid off? Yeah. we well, don't owe anything on it. So now, you know, you can do seller financing. You can ask them, was it, would it be okay if we go ahead and pay, um, you know, and you, and you can structure a deal and seller financing that makes sense. Or if they have a mortgage, maybe you can take over the mortgage and what's called subject to, there's just so many things you can do in real estate that will allow you to get cash flow. That's the point of this conversation about finding deals and wholesaling them. Cause if you can get the seller to agree to sell you this property, uh, let's just say for the 180 that he's asking, um, you can turn around and, and but you get it on a, a seller financing. Well, he's going to give you control of the property, the deed to the property, and then you're going to make payments to him on a promissory note, saying basically saying that if I don't ma make my payments, you're going to take the property back. So these payments could be as low as five hundred dollars a month. It could be as low as you know a thousand dollars a month. And so, so what's crazy is that then you could turn around and rent it out for fifteen hundred a month, and then you get the difference, right? And so, yes, at the end of the day, the person might, you you might give them instead of 180, you're going to give 200. So you put $20,000 in interest on top of it, but you're getting the cash flow. And then eventually the renter will pay this property off and then you'll have an asset as well. So you got cash flow and the asset completely paid off. Real estate will continue to be one of the most powerful wealth building uh, tools that you can you can be a part of. So great question, Jay. That would be my tip for uh, getting started in real estate. If wholesale is not your thing, you're not trying to get cash right away. Um, well, I was saying about like getting the property, you get the cash. Well, that's long term. But let's say you get the property for, let's say, 200 and you get that set up with the, the seller where they're willing to take, let's say, 800 a month, right? More realistic, like 800 a month. And and you put down 5,000, let's say. You can wholesale it to an investor who will give you $10,000. So you give 5,000 passes over to the seller. You keep 5,000. Okay. And then, you know, you can have an additional fee on top of that of another 10,000. So you can make $15,000 just for giving this cash flow that you negotiated to the investor. And guys, there's a whole community around this. And that's why I'm building the Mighty Meetup community uh, of investors and agents that are working together to, to help homeowners learn about these, these things because people are ending up upside down in their mortgages left and right with the market shifting the way it is. So, um, that's wholesale. Let's see what other questions we have here. So yeah, Jay says, thanks a million. Good stuff, guys. So crazy stuff. Yeah. Yep. Twitter. Yeah. Twitter is now X. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, good stuff. Lots of marketing questions here. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, social media. Well, we just talked about Twitter. Someone was asking about social media, how important it is in marketing your legal company. I have a lot of legal customers that attorneys and private investigators that we have with our website company, right? So uh, social media, again, so social media is more of your branding. So for attorneys and plumbers, doctors, you know, social media is so powerful. Because what happens is, is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So if you see my face, you see my face, you see my face every day, live at five, eventually you're going to be like, well, that, that guy, Mike, he knows what he's talking about, right? And 
there could be another guy who you've never seen who knows way more than I do, but you don't invest with him or you don't partner with him on deals or you don't, you know, join my community or any, or join his community because you don't know what you don't know him. And right. So in order to do business with people, you have to know, like, and trust them. This is something you hear until you're sick, right? Like, just like you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, you hear that. And then you just feel sick when you hear it because you've heard it so many times, but it's true. It's like, it's like gravity. You know, do you get sick when someone says, if I drop this pin in, on the ground, it's going to, it's going to fall. No, it's going to fall because that's what, how gravity works. Right. And that is how the social and business aspects work. Who you surround yourself with is how you're going to grow or how you're going to die in business. So there's a few things I wanted to share on the live at five is basically current events, what's going on in my life what's going on in real estate and uh, and help however I can in the marketing world. So if you know somebody who is in business, who is struggling or uh, someone who needs marketing tips or tactics, like send them to this channel. I'm giving free content here. I have multiple six figure companies that are doing really well. I'm pretty much financial. I am financially free. I could just sit at home and ride quads and, you know, go, fishing every day if I wanted to, but I enjoy helping people. So Jay says, how big is your community? It's a great question. So I actually just launched, uh, we have a community of real estate agents. It's called Mighty Nation. And there's, uh, I think, uh, 2,000 people in there. It's not huge, but there's a couple thousand people in there. The Mighty Meetup community, I just launched it. And we're actually doing, it's going to be, it's like its own social media kind of. I'm um, not going too crazy with it, but I want to have a community that's similar to bigger pockets where people could go on there and there'll be courses on. I'll put all my courses on there. So it's still in beta. I'm still building it out. But uh, as far as the mighty meetup community, but I want to bring real estate investors, and real estate agents together, teach real estate agents how to be agents, right? Not just post on social media about fancy houses. And I want to teach um, real estate investors, how to work with agents in, in that same way and teaching them, but also letting them know like, Hey, what's my buy, my buy box, my criteria and stuff like that. So the mighty meetup is going to be, is going to bridge the gap of real estate investors and real estate agents that actually want to be better at what they do. And so I'm going to teach them. It's a great question, uh, Jay. Uh, the goal is to build it as big, not so much as big as I can, but help as many people as I can. I know some compute, some, uh, as a marketer, this means a lot to me. I don't know about you, but, uh, I know some communities that have a hundred thousand people in them and they'll post something in the community and it'll get four likes. That's not a big community to me. The community is like, you know, like Pace Morby's community, where it's like he posts something in there and he gets 800 likes right away. Like, you know, and he's got 10,000, um, people or yeah, 10,000 people in there. So, um, bless self is this business. Yeah, Jay. Um, not sure what bless self is, but yeah, best self business. Yeah. You just want to be your bet. You just want to go out there and crush it guys. Real estate and marketing and creating cash flow of any kind, you know, for a while there here about a month ago, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at, um, food trucks. Okay. I was looking at food trucks and I was thinking about investing in a, a food truck company because I love barbecue. And, um, uh, a friend of mine, Cody Sanchez posted a video that spoke exactly to what I was thinking. It was like, just because, and she talked about food trucks being one of the worst investments. And she goes, just because your friends and family tell you that your brisket is amazing doesn't mean you should go out there and start a business where you're selling it to other people uh, because the margins are so low. Restaurant margins are so low. I'm talking about like 6%, 7%, lower than like a syndication where you can like invest your money and, or even a stock. It's lower than stocks, you know, 7 8%. Margins is terrible for any business. And so that's a standard in the restaurant industry. So it's just terrible. How many years are you in business is what I meant. Yeah, so pretty much I started my first company when I was, uh, I think it was 17. It was a courier company with my buddies in high school. And we were delivering parts from um, diesel truck companies to 
uh, to Petro and TA, TA and Love's Travel Centers, and they'd pay us a premium for driving our little, you know, Fast and the Furious car cars um, and going real quick. And one time we got a transmission, we had to bu- uh, rent a U-Haul <laughs> to go get the tranny. Uh, so yeah, that was my first company, and I was 17. Now I'm 41. Uh, actually, my birthday is in two days. My birthday is on Wednesday. I will be 41 years old. 41 years young, baby. 41 years young. <laughs> uh, in real estate, um, I had multiple companies after that too. The one that really hit, I think that really kind of helped me a lot was the, uh, my process serving company, private investigation and, and different things that we did. Skip tracing uh, in 2013, I started that business and that business took off. I invested in a software company that allowed me to uh, e-file, e- allowed my customers to e-file directly with the court, which really blew up during COVID. So that that has stayed really good. I started a marketing company during that time because I had so much time on my hands and I knew how to do marketing. I love marketing and automation. Uh, and then during COVID, I had to stop traveling. I had 32 conferences booked in 2019 and I had to cancel all of my flights that I'd already paid for for the year. Uh, and I was sitting in, um, my girlfriend at the time's house in Orlando and she was like, you got to get off the couch. You got to do something. Um, and, uh, and, and so I decided to become a realtor and that was obviously during COVID. So it wasn't very long ago. And then I started getting into, um, house flipping wholesale and stuff like that. And there was a lot of people that I had, that I had listed houses for that I would sell their house. And then they they had this cash. They were going to have to pay a whole bunch of money uh, in taxes. And so I learned about multifamily real estate. So I would help these guys sell all their single families and then invest in multifamily. And so that's that's my focus now. You know, I have a wholesale business in Orlando. I have a separate wholesale company here in New Mexico. And then I have the multifamily syndication that we're that we just launched not too long ago that we're that we're building. And we got a great team going for it. So we got one under, um, we're in partnership with someone who has one in contract, uh, in Georgia. That's a really great asset. If anybody's, um, accredited investor that wants to know. So happy birthday, honorable friend. Thanks, man. Jay is just like <laughs> blowing up my comments. I appreciate you, man. I assume it's a man. Jay Shack. Cool, man. Appreciate you. Oh, I think you might be in sub too, actually. It looks familiar. So uh, love to meet new people all the time. Got some great guests coming on pretty soon that are scheduled already. Um, I could probably mention some. I have one. I don't like to because sometimes they cancel, but I have uh, one gentleman, Ramillingham. Ramillingham is his last name. And um, he's a he's a, a partner at an investment company out of Denver that owns – He's been on HGTV. He's been on all kinds of different shows, and they uh, primarily do multifamily real estate, which is pretty cool, and he helps people get started in multifamily, which is even cooler. Um, So if someone got hundreds of thousands of dollars, what is the best advice you would give them? Uh, If you have hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, Well, two different things. So one that I know of right now, okay, in my knowledge, I don't know everything, but what I know, first of all, I can't give legal advice. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not an attorney, okay? Um, But what I would do if it were me uh, and what I do is I would take the money and I would put it into multifamily real estate that provides a good return. For example, the Georgia deal that I was talking about, I have to, I can't be too specific, right? Because you have to be an accredited investor. Um, But, you know, if you have a minimum of $100,000 and you're an accredited investor, you can put that money into this syndication that we're doing in Georgia that closes at the end of this month. And it has a two and a half times return. So the, the asset will be will be refinanced or sold after five years and you're going to get that money back. So you, so if you put in a hundred grand, you get roughly 250 grand back. Plus there's dividend checks that are paid out. I believe quarterly is what they're doing at a, at a, um, I think it's an 8% is what they're doing. So that is just the most genius way. I mean, if you had, what'd you say? 200, uh, 200,000, what'd you say? I'm looking for your comment here. 
hundreds, you just said hundred thousand dollars, got a hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. So, but if you had like two or three hundred thousand, I just want you to think about this for a second. If you put in a hundred, you got two hundred fifty back. Then you put it two hundred fifty, and you got five hundred back. Like how many five years would you have to do that before you had a million bucks? Then you take a million bucks, and you just put it into something that will pay you, you know, ten percent return, which is pretty easy to find. And then that ten percent of a million bucks is a hundred grand. So you're getting a hundred grand every year just passively off of interest, off that million bucks. So you know they say the hardest thing to do is to get to that first hundred k. So to get to the first hundred k is a hustle, right? I know because that first business I started, that process serving company, I would serve thirty or forty people a day. Jay, thirty forty people a day, about one hundred thousand. My first time on your content. I'm learning a lot. I appreciate it, Jay. I'm getting lots of questions from you. I get lots of questions on Instagram uh, and on Facebook. I actually do polls on my Facebook stories. So a lot of people will comment on the story by 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 typing into the question. And so I always record those and keep those here in my Google Keep, and then I'll answer them here on the live. So definitely follow me everywhere at MightyMikeReed.com. Um, looking forward every day. I wasn't, you know, I don't go live or haven't gone live every single day because I took the beginning part of the year off here in New Mexico. Just I was flipping this house and then I decided to keep the house here in New Mexico because my kids just love it and the summers are just so nice here. So we decided to stay and just love it. It's just the best. So yeah, if you got some money uh, that you want to invest, you can definitely reach out to me. Um, we're always doing something cool. I'm actually in the process of writing a book called top producer i have to look it up and see if it's copyrighted because i know i think there's a uh, uh an investment company called top producer but um but in the real estate agent world yeah there's actually um there's actually a crm called top producer that makes i remember i remember that now yeah inside Anyway, so it's going to be called Top Producer. I'll probably change the title just a little bit. But basically using social media to to be a top producing realtor, it's not hard. You know, most top producers only sell, you know, four or five deals uh, a month. And they're a top producer. <laughs> like, how do you sell five deals in a month and be a top producer? It's crazy. And then uh, another uh, idea for a book, obviously, is around being a listing agent, which is what I really excelled at where you can get two or three listings a week and um, minimum and um, and really crush it. I'm going to call that Rainmaker because in the real estate agent world, if you're a real estate agent, you know that Rainmakers are the ones that get the most deals, but they almost they almost talk about them like it's like one in a hundred because they are. In most real estate offices, there's only one Rainmaker because he's disciplined. He makes the phone calls. He doesn't want to go show houses like a buyer's agent. So the top producer generally is a buyer's agent. Okay, he's a buyer's agent, and then the the listing agent who's in the office all the time with a little headset, he's a rainmaker. And then um, the third book I'm going to write in a series this is going to be called Market Kings, and Market Kings is going to be a uh, is going to be a combination between the listing agent who who which is me. This, this is me, right? I'm basically telling the story of how I learned real estate and how I think somebody could most effectively execute real estate as a business. Because the third one is as a market king is how to be a wholesaler who understands real estate as an agent. So combining, that's what the whole mighty meetup community is, is like teaching you as an agent, all these other tools that you could be using to help you in your business. Okay. There's so many tools, uh, to be able to help people sell their homes. Essentially, you're helping people sell their homes. You may make some money along the way, but the goal is to help people. Can you send me your Facebook link in private messenger? Let's see. Uh, it looks like you're on LinkedIn. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love LinkedIn. You know, I, I applied on LinkedIn to be one of their guys who could go live. You know, it was like a private thing. I don't know if anyone could go live now, but back when I got on there, you had to apply. Like not just everybody can go live. So I love to make sure I go live on LinkedIn. So every single day, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to go live for about an hour answering your guys' questions the best that I can, provide as much value as I can, and uh, just look forward to connecting with, with uh, like-minded folks that really just want to go out there and create wealth 
and make a difference, right? So that's what the whole live mighty, you know, the whole live mighty, mighty nation community is about. And so thanks, Jay, for joining me this evening. Um, and thanks, everybody, on YouTube, on Twitter, which is now called X, okay, and on Facebook Live, of course. So we'll see you guys tomorrow live at 5. Take care now. For more great content like this and your chance to win cash prizes each week live online, visit www.mightymikereed.com. That's www.m-i-g-h-t-y-m-i-k-e-r-e-i-d.com. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review on your favorite audio platform. Until next time, take care and live mighty. Mighty.